Hello and welcome to the March edition of the Damned Podcast. And of course, our schedule is very easy for you to remember. It's just the third Sunday of every month at 8 p.m. GMT7 time. If you need to find out the time and GMT7 doesn't mean anything to you, just go on to Google or any other search engine and type in what time is it in Edmonton, Alberta? And in the search feature, it'll show you exactly what time it is here so that you can compare and contrast the difference from where you're at and know where and when to turn in live to the broadcast. This is an important broadcast. It's one that is uh, devastating indoctrination and how to overcome it. Uh, you know, one person might be asking, well, why aren't you talking about magical practices? Why aren't you talking about the runes? Why aren't you talking about safe? Why aren't you talking about avocations? Why aren't you talking about all of this cool stuff? Because of the fact that one of the most important tools, if not the most important tool in the arsenal of the sorcerer and the quest of knowledge is the sorcerer, him or herself. All right. You are your most important tool in the entire process. If that is not refined, you can have the finest temple. You can have the finest of all artifacts. You can have charged relics. You can have everything that money can buy and have it do nothing because you're not ready for it. You need to be prepared. And so we need to go through these things on a foundational level. Because, of course, the audience that we have is very mixed. I know there are some people out there that are experienced practitioners in the magical arts. And in the left-hand path, I also know that there are quite a few people who are brand new to this. And they don't know the things that some of the more experienced people know. And I don't want anyone to be left behind. As one person put it in describing this broadcast, one of my main purposes is trying to help pull the wool off of people's eyes so that they can see things more clearly. And, uh, you know, I want to... You know, give a little shout out to uh, somebody that I know and uh, consider a friend who has a broadcast out there on Podbean called The Venomous Tongue. Now, this is for people that are a lot more uh, very experienced and well-versed in the left-hand path. And he, of course, uh, is, is the kind of person that doesn't pull any punches. Uh, his broadcasts aren't very long. But, you know, you might find them to be very interesting to you because they are very action-oriented. Uh, and we're going to become a lot more action-oriented as time goes on because we're going to be progressing upwards and forwards as each broadcast is going to be building upon the one previous to it. And so and the, I'm not going to erase them off the archives so new people can start at the beginning and they can continue and catch up to where we're at. Now, one of the things that's very important to remember when you're dealing with anything esoteric is having an open mind denial when it comes to something that gets brought up like indoctrination is a major factor that causes people to trip and fall all right oh that couldn't be me you know i don't live anything like my parents did by the end of this broadcast you may see things a little differently all right indoctrination or brainwashing is something that happens everywhere and it always has happened in the nature of human society some of it is okay uh, there are some things that it's good to be indoctrinated to know uh, that you shouldn't do like stepping off of a 200 story building for instance uh, you might not like the ending Okay, especially if you want to prolong your life in this world, because maybe you have things that you want to accomplish in this world. But there is so much that we are bombarded with that does nothing but limit us and chain us deep inside. Now, indoctrination comes from a multitude of different sources. Okay, the earliest sources, and this, of course, covers the formative years that in psychology they tell us are the ages uh, up to five years old, where a person's mind is wide open, of course, are from our family. Now, I understand that many people, you know, have come from different types of family backgrounds, single parent homes, uh, divorced family homes, sharing 
uh, you know, parental sharing and so on and so forth. It doesn't matter the differences, the principles are the same, okay? And realize that in most cases, except in cases of abuse, uh, you know, a lot of the indoctrination that happens in that context is not done out of malice or ill will. But if the people, namely your parents or your family members, have not experienced spiritual growth, are imparting their wisdom to you, it's not going to give you the keys that you need to grow. It's going to help you in other ways, but not necessarily positively when it comes to the path of growth and becoming. So you need to bear in mind that these things can be so deep seated in your mind that it is below the level of your conscious awareness and you don't even think about it. And, you know, coming back to a statement I made just previously, uh, you know, oh, I don't live anything like my parents did. Uh, I'm not indoctrinated. Okay, if you're living a life where you are in constant rebellion against all the things that you were taught, well, you know, basically in terms of core principles that, you know, your your family unit tried to instill into you, that does not mean that you were not indoctrinated by it. Because if you were not indoctrinated by it, there would be no rebellion necessary. You would just be living your life and you would be at peace with yourself, wouldn't you? So if there's something you're struggling against, chances are it's something within you. And you need to deal with that in order to be able to move forward. Because let's put it bluntly, you know, striving for growth, striving for the goal of apotheosis is not an easy task. It's one that takes a great deal of self-sacrifice and will and consistency. And pardon me for being profane. Uh, if you're pissing away your energy fighting against yourself, how are you going to focus your energy on what you really need to be doing to grow? Answer me that. If you're using your energy to fight yourself, where are you going? It's not going anywhere, is it? Well, indoctrination doesn't stop with the family unit. We have our friends, we have our peer groups that are there. Now, at any time, too, I want you to realize that you can rewind this video, even while it's being broadcast live, if you missed something, to hear it again. I would recommend in some of this, because it's such an important subject, that if you want to, uh, have a pen and paper and write a few things down that may stand out to you, because... You know, this is something that you don't hear very many people talk about. Now, peer groups are a tremendous influence, especially through grade school and uh, university. Uh, we're going to get to that as well, uh, the institutions in a minute. But, you know, peer groups become very important because like minds work together. And so you reinforce one another's opinions and uh, viewpoints and belief systems, whether they are helpful or unhelpful. And, and so that strengthens and puts more layers on this construct that ends up becoming even more deep seated. And now I just touched on it. You know, we have the institutions that are there. I don't think I need to belabor too much about the religious institutions of our day because I don't think there's much controversy uh, about whether or not there's indoctrination that takes place in church. Okay. I'm sure you would agree that there's a heck of a lot of it. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's, uh, you know, any of the big three, uh, it's the same type of deal, you know, a, a scripture, because I got raised in an evangelical household, the son of a Pentecostal preacher. And of course, uh, you know, I got quoted several things to me many times through my childhood. One of them, of course, spare the rod and spoil the child, which they believed in quite well. Uh, also, you know, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Well, I just proved that one wrong. Uh, but that was an experience of transformation in my own life that that was so painful. Uh, you know, it is truly a dark night of the soul it's not something to take with triviality. 
But religious institutions, getting to the subject matter here of indoctrination, you know, they, they will have children's groups where from kindergarten age right through till uh, mid-teenagers or, or even late teenagers, they will have, you know, this information of their, their religious doctrines pounded into them day after day when they are there. And, uh, you know, it, it just becomes something that even if they end up not following it as a, a acolyte of the religion, the information that is causing self-limiting beliefs still has traces there and can hang a person up. And, uh, you know, it's just like chain after chain after chain getting put on a person. Now that, you know, let's let's forget about the religious side of things for a minute. If you think for a minute that in indoctrination, that if you were raised in a secular household and perhaps religion wasn't even an issue, maybe you were raised by people who were very atheistic uh, or agnostic, what have you. You had no pressures like that at all. You think that you got free from indoctrination? <laughs> I'm sorry, but the consumerist philosophy of our world today although it does not use the names of God, it uses economic and financial terminologies, is just as enslaving and not any different when it comes to the actual substance of it than the enslaving ideas of the religious philosophy. The difference is, is that the God is the almighty dollar. Okay, what do you get indoctrinated into? Well, you need to work hard and you need to make money because in order to have a house, uh, in order to feed yourself, in order to have the toys that you want, because the more you're able to purchase for yourself, buy, 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 you know, the more successful you are, the more you can strut and, you know, the greater you are as an impact in your community and so on and so forth. Oh, come on, woman, child, whoever's watching this. Do you really think that that makes you right? Do you really think that that makes you grow? All right, they used to have a little saying, uh, you know, he who dies with the most toys wins. Well, that's the attitude of the consumerist philosophy. And you know what? It's not just sorcerers like myself and others. But secular people are noticing this too, okay? I'm going to show you something here. Uh, now, I do not agree with this man's philosophy. However, in his experience, in the way that marketing research companies and uh, different uh, aspects of government, different aspects of uh, you know the corporate world, and I'm not talking about some strange conspiracy theory here. I'm talking about somebody who is an intelligent individual, actually used to be a, um, I can't remember the term for it, but a person who uh, worked for the FBI as a uh, lie detector analyst, okay, as well as working for many different companies doing market research. Uh, he came out with a book uh, a while ago called Mind Programming. His name is Eldon Taylor. And although I don't agree with his philosophy, what he talks about when it comes to the uh, aspects of, uh, you know, indoctrination in, in the secular world is dead on. Here, here's just something from the back of the book, okay? I'm going to mention something from the book in a second here too, but from the back of the book, it talks about brainwashing and marketing are big business, okay? And your precious mind is a coveted commodity. How does it feel to be a commodity? Hmm? In this book, Eldon Taylor exposes and tells you how to take your power back and free yourself to become your own best self. Now, I believe rather than some of the methods that he uses that we can free ourselves by resonating and understanding the connection of true darkness and the truth that is within it. Not the truth that you intellectualize, but that which you can connect with. And I've talked about that on some of the things I've said on social media. All right. But this is so insidious. Uh, you know, and a lot of people will say, okay, because let's, let's, let's look at this logically. I'm belaboring this a little bit because we're bombarded by this most of all, child or adult. It doesn't matter. Okay. All the time. 
all the time. Every picture you look at that has an advertisement in it, every commercial you watch on television, even when you're watching different television shows, even when you're watching movies, even when you're uh, going out and uh, listening to music, different things, they all have elements in them subliminally there in order to move you to put your money on the table or to manipulate you in some way into believing something that normally under, you know, just face-to-face -face circumstances, you'd say, oh, no way. All right. Uh, under a lot of places, spokesmen for different corporations will say, ah, oh, it doesn't work. Why would we bother spending that kind of money? Uh, you know, subliminal advertising in pictures or in television shows or in commercials. That doesn't work. Uh, we would never do that. And yet, while Eldon Taylor was working in that very industry, in the United States of America alone, I'm not talking about the UK, Australia, Canada, uh, any other part of the world. Just in the United States alone, those very companies that said, oh, no, it doesn't work, spent $4.5 billion, not million, but billion dollars to improve their techniques in subliminal advertising. All right, think about that for a minute. And then Eldon said something else in his book which I found very fascinating too. And he said, if the corporate powers that be understand the power of being able to brainwash and indoctrinate people through the use of subliminal messaging, what do you think governments do with it? Hmm, that's another interesting thought, isn't it? You know, and I'm not here to, you know, spin off a whole pile of different conspiracies. But, you know, one of the focuses I have in putting this broadcast out there is people starting to think for themselves because that's one of the keys of awakening and growing. And stop letting other people and other things do your thinking for you. All right. This is, this is pretty insidious stuff. Okay, and they say that black magic is evil. Oh, really? What's evil is taking somebody's opportunity to grow and binding them in an illusion that has no possibility of success, making them believe that they're on the right track and that it was their own idea to follow it, only to end up dust and ashes yeah that's evil learning how to grow and how to become to become something more than what you were to achieve apotheosis all right that's that's something that's a gift that's something that takes a lot of work but it's still a gift. Do you understand me? Do you feel me here as I'm talking to you? All right. I tested a few things out. Just obviously I didn't do a full psychological test with, uh, you know, subject groups because that would take years to complete. Not that I don't know how to do it, but the thing is, is, you know, time-wise, I don't think you all wanted to wait three or four years uh, for the next broadcast to come out. So I asked some people through some face-to-face -face conversations and I talked to people online and I had some interesting responses. I'm not gonna name their names because I'm not out to embarrass people, but I wanna make a point by this, okay? Uh, I talked about, you know, truth and darkness. Well, I got called the son of the devil. I got called, and, and this by somebody who, who wasn't even religious, I got called, you know, a perverter of things that are right. Uh, you know, because they couldn't argue with the concept of connecting with truth and darkness, but they could insult me. 
Now, I don't care. As I said in the last broadcast, if somebody insults me, you know, all that shows is that they're arguments speak. But, you know, the truth of the matter is, with a small team, uh, you know, I look at this as an opportunity to to see what people's gut level reactions are. And, uh, you know, I think the worst one was when I was downtown in Edmonton, Alberta. And uh, I mentioned the fact that the Gnostics had stated that Jehovah or Yahweh was an evil demiurge. Of course, the church at that time declared the Gnostics to be heretics. And of course, there was a lot of suppression that went on with that. And uh, I, I didn't mention about the church and the suppression, but I mentioned, you know, this Gnostic view that Jehovah was an evil demiurge. I got slapped across the face and then the person spit in my eye. <laughs> um you know what kind of person are you uh all right words don't mean a whole lot when you take a look at books like the bible the quran uh you know the torah uh the bag of the gita whatever you're looking at okay you see words printed on a page the most vile apostate of any belief system could have penned those words or the most devout person and you would never know you weren't there when it was written and it means nothing actions and deeds on the other hand mean something so you take a look at what I call the false light and how it paints you know, the darkness in such a, a vile uh, uh, imagery, okay? And then you look at the deeds of the followers of the false light. And I'm talking religiously here more than anything, but it filters through everything else, including the uh, economic and social conditioning processes that we see in the secular world, as I was just talking about. But when you take a look at the deeds what do you see how many people have been slaughtered like sheep and cattle in endless wars about which religion is the right one how many people have been needlessly slaughtered in all kinds of different circumstances with uh law enforcement over things that have no relevance to harm towards people but do towards economics uh you know uh, let me give an example here uh, if you were involved in doing something that required uh you know a religious experience with a a substance uh, for say ayahuasca Okay, if you went to South America, uh, or if you went to some place where you know you, you could legally do that, uh, you'd have no problem. But if I know you've tried something like that here, you might end up spending a decade in jail. Okay, was that pursuit of that experience something that was a harm to the community or to anyone? No. It was something that was frowned upon because it is not mainstream. It is not something that is a part of what is quote unquote acceptable. And where do we get these standards of acceptability? Indoctrination. All right. Now, when you start thinking about how you're going to grow spiritually, again, I ask you the question, when you have all these chains laid on you, you end up fighting yourself because those are rooted deep within your innermost mind. What energy do you have left to call upon to pursue actual growth? You'd be fighting just to stay where you are, if that was even possible. 
So what do we do? Well, in this part of the broadcast, I want to talk about some very important points that you can do to help break the cycle of indoctrination. I don't care what kind of indoctrination it is. I don't care what kind of brainwashing it is. It's a process, though. It's not a snap of the fingers and it's done. No, it took you a while to get to where you are now. And we've all been there and we all have the process that is an ongoing thing. Don't think I'm done with it. Uh, I still come across things in my own life and I think to myself, ah, oh, I believe that. Damn it. I've got to get rid of that. Uh, you know, every one of us comes into this uh, world and, and, and has these different challenges to face. And you're no different either. Even if you're experienced, it should be even more of an impetus for you if you are truly experienced in this path to do this because of a desire burning within your spirit to continue to grow and expand and to become. And for those that are new, this i hope is something that will open the door for you to understand okay so here's here's where having a pen and paper might be handy okay uh one of the things that uh first of all you need to overcome is denial so number one overcoming denial Oh, I'm not indoctrinated. <laughs> There's not one of us that hasn't been. So we need to accept the fact that this has happened. Forsake denying it, because that is the ego defending itself. All right. Truth. And the essence of darkness does not proceed from the ego. The ego is a construct that has been created and informed by all the belief systems that you have accumulated to date and has expressed in the world. Call it the personality, if you will, if that's a better term. All right. It has a fear that if you start connecting with truth and forsaking the illusion, that it will no longer be important. You know, that's partially true. But in order to enjoy life, we all have to have a sense of, uh, of ego. It just needs to be in balance. You know, it's not the Lord of the manor. The real you, that part of you that is instinctual, that part of you that is deep inside, that's the real you. And when you put things into their proper alignment, then the expression starts to make more sense and starts to flow more freely. So get rid of denial, number one. Number two, all right realize as i was just saying that your ego slash personality is a construct okay your ego is what other people have told you you are your ego is what other people and your own life experience that you have generated to confirm what other people have said, you know, is, uh, you know, built up in layers within your, within your mind. Realize that that has its place, but it's not the real you. Okay. The third thing, the real you is the instinctual part of your nature that is in the essence of darkness. All right, that is the real you. 
So when I talk about connecting with truth and darkness, I'm talking about this point here. Because when you allow the real you, that instinctual part of you, to take its proper place, it devours an awful lot of the construct of the personality that doesn't belong there. Why? Well, let me give you an example. You're in a situation, and, and this is a situation that I was in. I've, I've been in this situation on a number of occasions. Where my gut, my innermost being told me, don't do that thing that you're about to do. I don't know how I knew I shouldn't do that or why. Just a very strong sense. Don't do that thing that you're about to do. However, I then stopped and thought about it and reasoned about it. And I convinced myself that it was okay to do this thing anyway. Well, I ended up having incredible embarrassment. Uh, I ended up screwing myself over pretty bad. And I slapped myself on the forehead. Why did I do that thing I knew I shouldn't have? All right, here is the communication going on in the innermost part of your being. The Inner Beast, uh, on the, in the Black Path, which is a book uh, that I recommend for people to, uh, it's called The Wash. It's very instinctual, very intuitive. All right, it talks about, you know, how that is connected to the darkness. You know, it just knows. The ego, on the other hand, or the personality, tries to reason everything out. And when you put too much of your attention upon that aspect of yourself you're able to justify not listening to yourself on the deeper levels and then the consequences start coming in because if you do something uh, i don't believe in karma but i do believe in common sense if you do something that you know is going to cause you uh, problems even if you don't know how or why uh, you probably shouldn't do it uh, we're getting back to what we're talking about here with, with releasing ourselves from the bonds of indoctrination. All right, learning how to listen to that inner intuition of the beast of the wash that is the part of us that is attuned with darkness is vitally important in the whole process of getting rid of indoctrination. So I've talked already about, you know, get rid of denial. I've talked about how you need to uh, realize that uh, you know, the, the ego or the personality is not the real you. And now, of course, you, you need to learn to understand and to listen to that part of you that is the real you, the wash or the inner beast. And uh, the next point is to deliberately choose to align yourself with the essence of darkness to facilitate this whole picture and you have to choose to do it and realize that the challenges that you will face in overcoming the indoctrinations and brainwashings that have been in your life are not going to be removed like the snap of a finger but will be a process and one that may sometimes feel liberating at other times feel very difficult because it's hard to break through so many layers of indoctrination. But once you do accomplish that, it's a tremendous sense of relief. It's a tremendous sense of cleansing that happens within your spirit on the deepest levels of your being. Okay, well, how then if you have pledged yourself to align yourself with true darkness so that this connection could exist how do you strengthen that will you do that by regular and consistent meditation i said this in the old station and on various different things that i've done and i will say it again here today for all esoteric or magical practice meditation is the absolute foundation all right 
And I will add that for spiritual growth to really occur within you, getting rid of the old thought processes and starting to get those thought processes flowing that come from that instinctual part of your being, which transcends all of that crap. Meditation is key. Okay. And it's something that you're going to want to do on a regular and consistent basis, even if it's only for a certain amount of time per day. But you know what? Here's some advice. And of course, advice, you know, pardon me, advice is like assholes. Everybody's got one. Uh, but I will say this truly. Uh, if you turn the TV off a little bit more often, uh, maybe wait for the movie to come out in a different format once in a while. Maybe not be on your computer or on social media quite so much. I'm sure you could find half an hour to spend meditating. You know, you'll spend, and you know, I've had to have this talk with myself too. You'll spend umpteen hours working at a job. You'll spend umpteen hours entertaining yourself and distracting yourself with all kinds of things that really don't matter. And when it comes to something that really could help you grow, clean out your spirit, connect you with that which brings you the very gateways of apotheosis. You can't spare 30 minutes. Really? I hope, uh, you know, eventually, you know, you'll be able to spend more than 30 minutes. But, you know, 30 minutes, even 15. All right, that's better than nothing. That is a help. And it's a process. And, of course, every everything is a process here. And it does have its effect if you're persistent. Persistent. And also humble. And that's part of getting rid of the denial that I was talking about is the first point. All right. There's none of us that are immune 100% to some of the things that we get bombarded with in our society day after day after day. We have to cleanse ourselves of this dross filth so that we can have that pure focus and so that we can become. Now, I realize that there's a lot more that could be said on this subject matter. The reason that I am not going further into detail is, well, there's two reasons. One, I don't want to go on for hours and hours. And two, there are so much of a, of, a, of a gap and a range between experience levels with people. I don't want to give too much and I don't want to give too little. So I want to, you know, bring everything forward on an even keel because one of the things in meditation that you're going to be seeking after more than anything else so that you keep yourself out of delusion is balance all right oh that's strange hearing that coming from a left-hand path sorcerer balance is vitally important you don't want to be unbalanced that's weakness that'll send you over the deep end i watch people go over the deep end end up in a psych ward somewhere and why? Because they refused to balance themselves. And they just went with what they thought was real. And they were deluding themselves. And you could talk to them till you were blue in the face, but it didn't matter. You know, I don't want that to be you. I don't want that to be me. I don't want that to be the experience of anybody who is a true, sincere seeker on the left-hand path. Because apotheosis calls. Let's not blow the opportunity. 
So in closing today in the broadcast, uh, I want you to feel free to make any comments on our blog that's on our website or on our social media platforms. Also, this is an important announcement. The first session of the long-awaited Meditations in Darkness has been completed. It is going to be up on the website later on tonight, probably at about two hours. And then on Monday, it's going to be shared around all across our social media platforms. And this one is the gentlest of three. Okay, it's an introduction. And uh, what it is, is it, it's introducing yourself to yourself by immersing you into the true essence of darkness itself. Now, the second and third are going to be a bit more wild because, of course, the darkness has its predatory aspects and you need to learn to see things as they are, not as they would be hoped to be with sunshine and rainbows and so forth. You want truth, not false projection. But this first one is one, and even if you're an experienced sorcerer, you might want that as a refresher just to, to be able to put yourself back in that state of balance again. Uh, maybe brand new uh, to this, you'll you'll find that for the first time. It will also build your self-control in maintaining your awareness in deep states of consciousness. And these are all very important. But that sort of ties into this. Also, I wanted to say that there was somebody who did ask a question. There was a few people and uh, one that was decided upon to be answered that said the special uh, content page on our website, which is currently password protected. I'm going to be taking the password off tomorrow and posting a video there answering this person's question. And once a month, for people that ask questions and have special question in the subject line of their email to the damn podcast at gmail.com, you know, I'll pick a question. And I'm not going to cheat and pick the easiest one, okay? I'll be fair. And uh, answer that question. It'll be the question of the month in video in the special content page. And at that point in time uh, on Monday, uh, the password will be gone and you'll be able to, anybody will be able to access that page. So I'm hoping that, you know, you're going to take advantage of that. We want interaction. We want to do something that makes an impact and makes a difference. And I hope you know that you have success if you are truly sincere and desire to seek after truth and darkness and to seek after apotheosis. Infernal blessings. Thank you for watching. This has been the Damned Podcast. <laughs>